Hey folks, in this video I'm going to talk about the Cayley-Hamilton theorem for matrices, an important classical result in linear algebra. I'm going to clarify what the theorem is really saying and what it's not saying. Before we get started, remember to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Once I reach a few thousand subscribers, I'm planning to open my own megachurch, and only subscribers will be invited. Until then, let R be a commutative ring with unit. If you want, you can just take R to be a field, like the real or complex numbers. Let A be an n by n matrix over R. Recall that the characteristic polynomial of A is defined like this. Here x is an indeterminate over R, so xi minus A, where i is the n by n identity matrix, is a matrix of polynomials in x over R of degree at most 1, which is called the characteristic matrix of A. The determinant of this matrix is a polynomial in x of degree n. The Cayley-Hamilton theorem says that a square matrix satisfies its own characteristic equation. That is, when we substitute the matrix A for the indeterminate x in the characteristic polynomial of A, we get the zero matrix. For example, if A is the 2 by 2 matrix seen here, the characteristic polynomial is x squared minus 14x plus 39. The theorem says that the matrix A squared minus 14A plus 39I equals the zero matrix, which you can verify by direct computation. When you first see this theorem, it's tempting to give the following one-line proof. PA of A, by substitution of A for X in the definition of PA, is just the determinant of AI minus A. But AI equals A, so that's just the determinant of A minus A, which is the determinant of zero, which is zero. Easy, right? What's all the fuss about? However, a moment's reflection shows that something is wrong here. On the left-hand side, PA of A is a matrix over R, like the one we saw in the example on the previous slide. But on the right-hand side, zero is a scalar in R. Those two things can't be equal, so this equation doesn't type check. More specifically, we know that the characteristic polynomial of A looks like this, where the C's are some coefficients in R. By PA of A, we mean the matrix seen here, where A has been substituted for X. One thing we know for sure is that ain't a scalar, so we can't compute PA of A as in the attempted proof. However, we can compute other things that way. For example, the constant term of the characteristic polynomial, as with any polynomial, can be obtained by evaluating the polynomial at zero. We can substitute zero for x in the definition of PA to obtain the determinant of zero i minus a, which is the determinant of minus a, which by multilinearity of the determinant is minus one to the n times the determinant of a. Unlike the equation in our failed proof, this equation is correct. As an example, with the 2 by 2 matrix from earlier, the constant term of the characteristic polynomial is 39, which is also the determinant of the matrix. After seeing this, it's natural to ask, why does this type of computation work for PA of 0, but not for PA of A? After all, syntactically, this equation for PA of A and this equation for PA of 0 are very similar, and it's not immediately obvious why one is legit and one is not. In order to answer that question, we must examine the semantics involved. In both cases, P A of S means the result of substituting some element S for the indeterminate X in the polynomial P A of X. To make sense of that, we recall the universal property of the polynomial ring R X. In a certain sense, which the universal property makes precise, R X is the most general ring obtained from R by adjoining a single element X, which commutes with every element of R under the ring multiplication. This is the universal property. If phi from R to S is a ring homomorphism, and the element S in S commutes with phi of R for every element R in R, then there's a unique ring homomorphism phi S from the polynomial ring Rx to S, extending phi and mapping X to S, as seen in this diagram. Note the rings R and S here need not be commutative. However, the commutativity condition for the element S is required, since the indeterminate X commutes with every element of R in the polynomial ring Rx by definition. We call phi s substitution of s, or evaluation at s, over phi, and we write phi s of f as f of s for a polynomial f when phi is understood from the context. Concretely, if f is the polynomial seen here, then f of s, understood to mean phi s of f, is the element of s seen here. We can specialize this to the case of matrices. Let m n r be the ring of n by n matrices over the commutative ring r. Let phi from R to matrices over R 
map each scalar r to the so-called scalar matrix r times i, then phi is a ring homomorphism. Moreover, any matrix A over R commutes with the scalar matrices. So by the universal property, we have a substitution homomorphism phi A from polynomials over R to matrices over R. If F is the polynomial seen here, then F of A, understood to be phi A of F, is the matrix seen here. This is just the type of matrix substitution we performed earlier. The fact that phi A is a homomorphism is very convenient, for example, when substituting A into products of multiple polynomials. In fact, we see that phi A maps from polynomials over R into the commutative subring of the matrices over R generated by A and the identity matrix, here denoted RA. The elements of this ring are sometimes called polynomials in A. On the other hand, if phi is the identity homomorphism on R, then since zero commutes with every element in R under multiplication, we obtain a substitution homomorphism phi zero from polynomials over R to elements of R. If F is the polynomial seen here, then F of zero is the element seen here, which is just the constant term of the polynomial. This is just the type of zero substitution we performed earlier. Again, let PA be the characteristic polynomial of the matrix A over R. Recall we're trying to explain why this equation is true. On the left-hand side, we're substituting zero for x after computing a determinant in the polynomial ring Rx. On the right-hand side, we're substituting zero for x before computing a determinant in R. The question is, why do these agree? Well, since the determinant is defined in the same way over all rings, for example by the Leibniz formula, it's a natural transformation, making this diagram commute. All the arrows here are homomorphisms of the underlying multiplicative monoids of the rings. The arrow on the left going down is element-wise substitution of zero. Chasing the characteristic matrix xi minus a from the top left of the diagram shows that pa of zero, which is obtained by going right then down in the diagram, equals the determinant of zero i minus a, which is obtained by going down then right in the diagram. That's the desired equation. Importantly, when going down then right, we get the determinant of 0i minus a, because both xi and 0i represent scalar products. The elements x and 0 are multiplied by each element of the matrix i in these products. What if we try to adapt this to compute pa of a? When we do, we obtain this commutative diagram. This time, chasing the characteristic matrix across then down, we obtain pa of a but chasing it down then across, we do not obtain the determinant of ai minus a, and there's no way we could. To see why, we focus attention on the arrow on the left of the diagram going down, which we denote by big phi a. It performs element-wise substitution of a. But this means it produces matrices of matrices, that is, matrices whose elements are matrices, not to be confused with block matrices. For b, a matrix of polynomials in x, when we substitute A for X in the entries of B, we obtain a matrix, each entry of which is a matrix. Concretely, if the ijth entry of the matrix B is the polynomial Bij of X, then the ijth entry of the matrix big phi A of B is the matrix Bij of A. In particular, if the ijth entry of A is Aij, then big phi A of the characteristic matrix of A is the matrix of matrices seen on the right here. If we write bold i for big phi a of i, and bold a for big phi a of a, then we have big phi a of the characteristic matrix of a equal to a bold i minus bold a. Critically here, a bold i denotes a scalar product, not a matrix product. You might say the matrix a identifies as a scalar in this context. a bold i is the result of taking the matrix product of a with each entry of the matrix of matrices bold i. Chasing the characteristic matrix of A down then right in the previous diagram, we obtain the matrix which is the determinant of A bold I minus bold A. The Cayley-Hamilton theorem says that this matrix is the zero matrix. This analysis explains why this equation in our original attempted proof is false. Substituting A for X in XI minus A to obtain AI minus A is semantically wrong because it conflates scalar multiplication and matrix multiplication. On the other hand, the equation with bold i and bold a is true because the determinant is a natural transformation, just like with the equation for pa of zero. We can actually take this analysis one step further that will lead us to a correct proof of the theorem. Recall that bold a is a matrix of matrices, 
and those matrices belong to RA, the commutative subring of the matrices over R generated by A and the identity matrix. The characteristic polynomial of bold A is defined like this. Here X is an indeterminate over RA, and you can check that bold I is indeed the identity matrix among matrices with entries in RA. It follows that the coefficients of this characteristic polynomial are matrices in RA, denoted here by capital C's. Notice that the polynomial can also be viewed as a matrix with polynomial entries. Indeed, any polynomial with matrix coefficients can equivalently be viewed as a matrix with polynomial entries. Now the Cayley-Hamilton theorem just says that A is a root of this polynomial, as seen here. This substitution of A works exactly like the substitution of zero over the ring R seen earlier, but here everything is happening over the ring RA. From familiar facts about roots of polynomials, we know that this equation is true if and only if the linear polynomial xi minus a, that is, the characteristic matrix of a, divides the characteristic polynomial of bold a over the ring ra. And we already know something very close to that. By applying the fundamental theorem of the classical adjoint to the characteristic matrix of a, we obtain this equation. This equation relates matrices with polynomial entries but those can be viewed as polynomials with matrix coefficients. In fact, this equation will prove the Cayley-Hamilton theorem provided that the left-hand side amounts to the characteristic polynomial of bold A, and the adjoint on the right-hand side, when viewed as a polynomial in X, has its coefficients in RA. And in fact, both of these things are true. The first fact follows from chasing the characteristic matrix of A around this diagram. Here RAX denotes the ring of polynomials in X with coefficients in RA each of which can be viewed as a matrix with polynomial entries. The arrows going down make scalar matrices out of scalars. Again, the diagram commutes because the determinant is a natural transformation. The second fact follows from the adjoint relation on the previous slide. I leave it to you to think through the details of both of these facts. The important takeaway here is that this analysis not only clarifies the meaning of the Cayley-Hamilton theorem, but also leads naturally to a correct proof. Hopefully you found this insightful. Here are the references I used while making this video. Thanks for watching.